do have a moving body of water behind us, which I understand can draw spiritual energy. Spiritual energy can also be attracted to items and artifacts, which we have over 6,000 artifacts within this space itself, so it would make sense if such a thing was happening that this will be the area where it's centralized. So the type of items that we have in our collection are historical paintings, contemporary art, as well as uh, curiosities from different artists' estates or uh, sculptures. We also have a pretty large rare book collection and also libraries from different people. So we have Isabel McLaughlin's library collection in general, as well as Thomas Boakley's items. You know, I used to write just history books, but every time I was out there doing research, people would be telling me these stories about, you know, the spirit haunting a building or this or that. And I, mean, I kept it always in the back of my mind. And then 20 odd years ago, I decided, you know, maybe I should really take a look at the subject matter and, and write about it. So that's when I really got started. And I, I, of course, I've never stopped. So I'm the gallery preparator. I deal with the permanent collection, almost exclusively with a few other people on staff. Uh, I spend a lot of time alone in the vault or in the workshops, building props and stands and things for upcoming exhibitions or preparing things to go out on tour. Um, pretty skeptical. I mean, I've heard things that can't really be explained, but I find most things have a logical explanation behind them. So the first incident that I recall that made me question. I was actually leaving the vault area. There's two vaults kind of perpendicular to each other, which I have to turn around and close the door. When the door was only about two inches left open, I saw a shadow dart through the vault. So I opened the door again, went in to investigate, said hello. Now, the thing that was peculiar was the vault door was closed, so there is no way someone could move through that space. I then spent about two minutes trying to reproduce that shadow because that did not just happen. Which was this black shadow and maybe embellishing but was wearing like a hat and an overcoat. I was hired here at the gallery when I was 18. It was a funny start but I was security and installations. So I was the one who would, would lock up at night. I was always the last one to leave the building. I'm 18 and I'm walking through this gallery space doing my evening security rounds at around nine o'clock at night. And I'm, I'm stopped when I get about halfway into this room because I sense a presence in this corner. And I'm pretty certain I saw a shadow more than once in that corner, which was a long, elongated, definite kind of male presence. And I had a feeling he was wearing a hat. And I would not pass the corner, I would not go downstairs to in that direction to do my, my evening rounds. I would go down the other stairway, which was on the other side of the building, look around, lock the doors, and then get out. <laughs> it would have been right about, uh, right about here, standing motionless and uh, uh, very, uh, not uttering a noise, uh, not a word, just, just staring, very unnerving. Do you know who Terry Boyle is? Terry Boyle used to work here too. Years later, he became um, really interested in, in, in ghost stories, and he has actually written a couple of books. Well, it's 40 years later. Uh, I'm a Canadian author these days with 22 books written. But back in the uh, 70s, I worked at the Robert McLaughlin Art Gallery as a gallery assistant and uh, handled the security at night in the gallery. Your call today certainly uh, reawakened some of those times for me. It was a small gallery. There was Alan Walkinshaw and uh, Sean McQuaid, who was an artist, and myself, and we all worked at, at the gallery. Uh, I recall now when you mentioned it that Alan and Sean had talked about this, this figure that they had seen either in the stairwell or in the work area, which was kind of like a storage area in the basement of the gallery at the time where a lot of the framing was done, and this figure was seen wearing a, a top hat. You couldn't make out who it was. It, it was a bit of an eerie, eerie place to work alone at night, 
Um, not that I heard any doors opening or closing, but, you know, just a feeling like, uh, are you really alone? I mean, it was interesting to be asked to uh, participate in this because I hadn't really thought about it for a long time. And I can actually feel that that image or that presence is, is still strong. When I'm, especially when I'm sitting in this room only 10 feet away from the corner. <laughs> now, there was one show that we hung, Sean, Allen, and myself. These works of art were priceless. So we were hanging this show one night. The opening was the next day. And I recall that we, you know, we hung the whole show in the main gallery and it looked great. Then we left the building, we all left the building, we locked up. No one was in that building until we arrived the next morning. But when we walked in, there was one of the C.W. Jeffries paintings uh, on the floor, resting up against the wall, and it was ripped as if an object had gone through the middle of the canvas. And we all kind of looked at one another thinking, what went on here? To this day, or at the time, uh, we didn't have an answer of how that painting uh, was taken off the wall and some object like a chair leg went through the canvas. So another incident we experienced is there was an exhibition called Drift, and in this exhibition there was three televisions mounted on the wall. In the middle of the night, the central TV decided to fall off the wall. The mount was still on the wall, everything was the same as it was before, except for the TV was on the floor. So the fact that the other two TVs weren't affected, that means there wasn't vibrations in the building, it was simply this TV lifted up and fell to the ground. You had asked me about, you know, who might be inhabiting that building in spirit form. And I mentioned maybe Alexander Luke could, could be uh, coming and going. I mean, her collection of artwork is in the main collection, right? And uh, Robert McLaughlin as well. Or what was there before the gallery was ever built? There had been uh, houses there originally when the, this city was first founded, right? So there might be a connection with somebody from one of those buildings. That building is still there, but in another dimension, even though the art gallery's in its place. So sometimes you often encounter this um, where you'll, you'll move through time. I accept them. If I can try to find the logical solution, I do. I don't let it creep me out anymore. It's just that happened and we move on. I, I, I certainly believe in a, another dimension. Um, and it's really interesting that you really kind of, kind of jolted me today with your call about the gallery because I hadn't thought about that for years. Now thinking, yeah, there really was, there is something there. Yeah.